Hey there, sign folk. Welcome back. My name is Sean the Sign Guy, and this is my sign making channel. Not only about making signs, sometimes I venture off the deep end and I just do things that I think may help or benefit my business. One of those things when I was looking around in Marketplace, as I normally do, buying things that I probably shouldn't be buying or things that really have no relevance, is I came across laser engravers. So, Being that I have a spontaneous nature, I did end up acquiring the Atom Stack X7. Not the Pro, just the X7. A 5 watt diode laser that is controlled by Lightburn Software. Pretty cool package. Um, you know, we were looking to get into buying awards for uh, the RC track. And so I went out looking around and it's not like super expensive, you know, but, you know, everything has value. And um, I figured that, you know, with the cost of some of these less expensive lasers, um, how, you know, difficult are they to learn? Like I said, the, the learning curve is very, very easy. Um, but again, I dove right in, went on the marketplace. There's not a lot of them, but maybe I pulled the trigger a little too early and just kind of settled for what I got. I think that, uh, you know, hindsight being a sign shop, um, I'm not a print shop, I am definitely a sign shop, but the way that the market generally goes is you only have so many years of doing the same thing before someone else catches on and creates competition. Competition generally lowers the cost or the price of things unless you can kind of sell yourself. Um, so I'm always looking for a different market, a different niche, a different way of making money. And when I came across this laser, um, I figured that number one, it's great for making trophies and awards for our RC track. And the second thing was, is we have thousands of different files that I just don't utilize anymore. A lot of the stuff that we used to sell on Amazon and Etsy um, that are not really, not to say that they're not relevant, but they're just not the place to put those things right now. So we ended up pulling all that stuff down. But a laser engraver, up a whole new market like I said if you have templates and designs and you can utilize those and you can put them on a different product I think it's a great selling point to generate more revenue into your shop this isn't the only thing that I'm going to continue doing but it's a cool way of just expanding upon things that are already set in stone I think that the personalization and the engraving part of of, of this market there's always going to be a place for it. Just like signs. Someone always needs a sign. Someone's always going to need something personalized. The holidays are coming up. Um, a lot of the things that we used to do that were personalized stuff, we don't so much do anymore. But with the laser, let me show you. So the first thing that I ended up stumbling upon and made a lot of mistakes on was doing these stainless tumblers. Um, you know, it also does some other really, really cool stuff. I'm not sure of the life expectancy of this stuff, but black ACM. This is uh, this is pretty cool. This was on the uh, on the laser engraver as well. Like I said, this only took about ten minutes. That this is a five watt diode laser. This is probably the bottom of the barrel, um, the the weakest laser that you could probably obtain. They don't even sell these anymore on their website. Now they offer the X7 Pro, which is, I believe, a 10 watt laser. And uh, I think they even make um, 20s and I think I've seen 40 watt diode lasers, but I'm kind of going in the, the other direction. And when I say that I kind of pulled the trigger a little too early on this one, I should have held out. One of the downfalls to the smaller five watt diode lasers is they are less powerful the less powerful that it is the slower that things operate pretty cool so if you've never gotten into some of the lasers this thing is pretty mobile very easy to set like i said i'm using light burn um, i like light burn because it's pretty much an all-in-one system pretty much uh like flexi sign um, so you have your, you can design in here and then it's also actually your output or your, um, your G code runner, um, kind of a, a lot different. I use three different programs to run the CNC and everything has its place, but I think the CNC has its place. 
um, and the laser has its place and the vinyl cutter has its place. Um, you know, each one kind of excels in different areas, but uh, the laser engravers, uh, they pretty much have their own little market. And But light burn, if, if you're going to get into laser burning or laser engraving, cutting, sorry, um, light burn is pretty much the way to go. 60 bucks for a lifetime uh, subscription. It's not a bad deal, and I think it comes with free updates. So let's get into uh, doing a little a little demonstration here. So with light burn, um, this cutter is very simply operated. There is no Wi-Fi on this. Like I said, it's connected by USB cord. This is your power cord. Powers everything up. Um, you can hear the fan. I have no air assist um, on this cutter. I, I don't want to spend any more money on this. I'd rather invest in uh, another area. Um, I do have my rotary back here, obviously, for um, for the tumblers. And uh, like I said, that actually works really well. That was a lot easier to grasp a hold of than, um, than what I thought was. So with this, this is your setup. I mean, this is it. It's fairly mobile. Like I said, you can almost take this into events uh, with the exception of the fumes and uh, pretty much set up and do custom things right off the bat. But uh, the thing that I love about light burn is it is a full-on production software so it's very easy to uh to do things basically you draw on here uh we are set home and then very 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 easy to do um i don't have the honey honeycomb board like i said haven't gotten that far yet but uh yeah i mean so with the tumblers that we ended up giving out for awards, I made 12 of those tumblers. It took me two hours, two hours each front and back to do these with a five watt laser. Kind of got me thinking a little bit more. This is, this is something that I really, really want to get into. Um, the sun industry has been good to me. Like I said, I still do that. You know, that's, that's a good thing, but I need something else to fill the void to use the files that we created years and years and years ago and um, pretty much have a good idea with what I want to do. And that's number one, that's what you got to keep in mind is where is your market? What, what are you going to do with this product once you end up investing the money? So YouTube, subscribers, watchers, I need your help. Those that are in the laser engraving industry, whether it's a print side or hobby side or whatever, um, I I want to cut acrylic, clear acrylic, which basically uh, takes away the diode lasers. I understand that. When it comes to CO2 lasers, which is pretty much what I'm looking for, um, what's a good wattage to look for? Is it 30, 40? Is it footprint? Bigger is always better. I'm not sure. I'm pretty much torn between the uh, the OMTAC. Uh, 16, 16 by 20, maybe one of the, uh, one of the bigger ones I have room. Um, this cutter is actually getting sold. And so I'm going to reinvest that money into buying a laser that goes right here. I have a nice window to ventilate the fumes out, um, which is a good thing. And I have another 24 inch cutter that'll replace, um, that one. I still have the 15 inch cutter that goes with the edge. So again, I'm asking all my watchers, uh, laser, power, wattage, what do I do? What do I look for? Uh, again, like I said, I want to cut acrylic. I do want the ability to cut clear. So again, like I said, the diode lasers are pretty much out. Fiber lasers are probably a little bit salty for me. I uh, don't want to go down there and um, I really don't want to spend that much money right now uh, with the way things are kind of looking. So I'd love to hear your comments, your suggestions down below. And um, like I said, it's, uh, it's going to be CO2 or nothing, I believe. All righty. Well, I hope everyone has a great one. Like I said, appreciate you watching. Again, uh, stay tuned for the next one. Like I said, hopefully we get to pull the trigger here in the next week or two on getting a new laser and getting that all set up. And like I said, we'll start getting into that aspect as well. So until then, y'all take care. We'll see you.